Today we are going to make one of my childhood favorites. Growing up in the 70s, Jell-O was everything. Literally. Jell-O salad, Jell-O dessert, Jell-O with whipped cream, and Jell-O cake. And today that's what I'm making for you is Jell-O cake. Jell-O cake is a delicious, refreshing, summertime dessert. Really, you can have it all year. But my mom mostly made it in the summer because it was easy and it was cool and delicious. Jell-O cake is one of my very favorites from when I was a kid. You can make this any flavor you like, but what I've done is you're gonna to wanna to prepare a regular box cake mix, whatever is your favorite brand. Y'all know my favorite brand is Duncan Hines. This is a yellow Duncan Hines cake mix prepared according to the box instructions. So it has a cup of water, a third of a cup of oil, and three eggs, and just baked in a nine by 13 pan, and then I took and I let it cool completely, and then I took this big fat skewer, and I just made several holes in the, into the cake. That's one of the secrets here. You wanna make sure you have a lot of holes in the cake because that's where we're gonna be ready to receive the jello part of this deliciousness. I have one three ounce box of orange flavored jello or gelatin. It doesn't matter if you use the brand name or the store brand. I have one cup of very hot water you can use boiling water, but the water comes out of my tap so hot that it's hot enough to dissolve this. What the trick here is you wanna make sure that you dissolve all that jello powder and all that sugar. And this is a great cake to make with your kids. Um, get them involved because there's a lot of like pouring and poking and spreading because we're gonna spread some whip topping on top of this cake after we pour the jello in. And the way I see it is a lot of times they will people will tell you to use two cups of very hot water to dissolve this, but then you have to wait for it to cool. But I use a cup of hot water, and after we are pretty sure that everything is nice and dissolved in there, we're gonna add a cup of cold water. Now when you make jello just to make jello, you know it doesn't set up immediately you have to put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. So it's just right, the right temperature to pour over our cooled cake and to get the ball rolling. This is also gonna help it cool down a lot quicker once you put it in the fridge. It's also going to allow us to put the whipped cream topping directly on top of the cake sooner. Now, I know I have this in a measuring cup with a pour spout, but honestly, I find the best way to do this is to take your little gravy ladle and just gently distribute the jello evenly across the top of the cake. Just make sure that you evenly distribute all of your jello liquid. This is also a really economical cake to make and everybody loves it. And you can make this, like I said, with any flavor jello you like. Today we're using orange because we kind of want to go for an orange creamsicle kind of theme here, but I made one the other day just to make sure I remembered how to make it, and I used raspberry jello because raspberry is one of Rick's favorite flavors. And get down to the bottom, just pour in all the rest of that in there. And then, this is not too warm at all. We can just go ahead and put the whipped topping on the top of the cake. Now, I have used homemade whipped topping. I used heavy whipping cream and powdered sugar, and you know, just a pretty basic recipe two cups of heavy whipping cream, a half a cup of powdered sugar, or less if you want it, have it a little bit less sweet. And I'm just gonna take my offset spatula, you can use a butter knife or whatever you have within reach. Just spread this whipped topping evenly over the top. Now, just because I used homemade whipped cream doesn't mean you have to. I just do not really like Cool Whip that much, but there are alternatives. You can use True Whip, or you can make your own like I have here. But if you wanna use Cool Whip, you go right ahead. That is just not my favorite thing. And I think originally my mom did use Cool Whip on this. And I have stabilized my whipped cream with some um, Ultra Gel or Instant Clear Gel. So if you have that on hand, one tablespoon of Instant Clear Gel for every cup of whipping cream that you have used for your topping and you'll be good to go. This will help it stay nice and firm and it won't melt into your cake as it's cooling. Once we get this all spread in here, you're just gonna go ahead and pop a lid on this. I have the lid that came with the pan and we're gonna refrigerate this for at least 
a couple of hours before we slice into it. Once this is ready to come out and slice, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, there you have it. Our Jello cake, I kept mine in the refrigerator for less than an hour because I really wanted to get this video done for you guys. So you'll be sure and keep yours in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Four hours is better and tomorrow it's gonna be the most perfect because you really, really want that gelatin to set and mine is not 100% set, but it's enjoyable nonetheless. So as you can see, you can tell where the orange jello went into the cake and the whip topping, it looks really delicious and you know what has to happen now, right? Rick's gonna have to taste it. If I have to. You have to. So here we go. You can see, full of orange goodness. It's gonna taste a little bit like creamsicle-esque. What do you think, honey? Good. And that is how you make a jello cake. Super simple, super delicious, perfect for carrying to a barbecue, picnic, or potluck. And everyone is gonna love this. What it entails is two 20 ounce cans of crushed pineapple. You're not going to drain these two four serving size boxes of instant pistachio pudding, one cup of chopped pecans, two cups of miniature marshmallows, and one small tub. This one happens to be 10 ounces. There may be another brand that you like. Maybe it's the small tub is eight ounces. Either one is fine. Uh, whipped dessert topping. Now this is straight up an original kind of recipe that came right out of that era where jello pudding and jello gelatin were super popular and everybody was using it. I'm going to say there wasn't a holiday celebration in my youth where it didn't have a jello salad of some sort. Um, straight up a jello pudding salad or marshmallow salad or you know something that was full of fruit cocktail or even a jello mold I might add. So my mom was really into the jello mold thing so that was always fun, but not when it didn't come out. That was not fun at all. So the way that we start this Watergate salad is we're going to go ahead and put our crushed pineapple in the bowl. We're going to add our instant pudding and we're going to go ahead and give this a stir. And it's going to be some funky color. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is a very bright salad. Just give this a really good stir and make sure everything is stirred in there really well. And there are going to be a little you're gonna see a couple of dark flecks in here. This is from the pineapple. You can't really avoid that, so it don't even you. try. It's not gonna hurt you, it's just extra fiber. And I even bought the brand name Pineapple. <laughs> so there we are all mixed up with our pudding and our pineapple. Go ahead and toss in your chopped nuts. I've used pecans, you can use pistachios, um, you can use walnuts, you can use almonds in here. You can use whatever you want. Make it your own. You can see how this is already starting to set up. Toss in our marshmallows. That's all mixed up. We're going to take our, our dessert topping and we're just going to fold it in. Just keep folding until you don't see any more of that dark green color. You want this to be a nice light green and you want the color to be even. That way you know that you've incorporated everything properly. Okay, I'm going to go put this in a serving dish and then we'll be back and I'm going to give you a little bit of history on Watergate salad. Well, there you have it. Our Watergate salad is all ready to go to our potluck, our picnic, our barbecue, or our family dinner. And now I'm gonna serve you up a dish of it. And I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And I have a... Um, you know what it needs now? What? Bacon. It doesn't need bacon. <laughs> oh. Seriously, that would be good in there? Mm. It's coconut. Coconut, you can sprinkle some on the top of it when you serve it, along with some cherries if you like, if that's your deal. Um, but yeah, you can totally do that. There you have it, a beautiful serving of Watergate salad. Oh, why is it called that? Funny, you should ask. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some information. That didn't sound fake at all, did it? Um, I did go digging a little bit because I wondered why is this called Watergate salad? And I can assure you this has absolutely nothing to do with the Watergate scandal and Richard Nixon. Absolutely nothing. In, in 1976, which I think, I don't know, I don't know how old this recipe is, but in 1976, um, the Denver Post in their edition of Empire Magazine, and I guess that's like a tabloid that would be inserted in the newspaper, kind of like Parade, um, 
published a recipe for Watergate salad. Now, rumor has it that Watergate salad was a concoction that was thought up by a sous chef at the Watergate Hotel, which was part of the Watergate scandal, but this is something that was said to have been served at brunch on most weekends, and then Watergate salad took off in popularity during and after the presidential scandal, which shares the same name. However, the Denver Post article does not verify this. It is a rumor, noting that most, like most sources, the origins of the name are obscure. The recipe originally published by General Foods, which merged into Kraft, um, and is now known, you know, is under the Kraft banner of companies, uh, called for two of the products that we use today, which was the pistachio pudding and the whip topping, otherwise known as Cool Whip. According to Kraft, there are several urban myths regarding the name change, but they cannot substantiate any of them, and several competing explanations exist. Kraft actually developed a recipe for something that they called pistachio pineapple delight in 1975 and that was the same year that pistachio pudding mix came out and um, Kraft did not refer to this as Watergate salad until consumers started requesting the recipe under this of it under that name and according to Kraft Kitchens when the recipe for pistachio pineapple delight was sent out an unnamed Chicago food editor renamed it Watergate salad to promote interest in the recipe when she printed it in her column. Neither the article nor the editor has been tracked down, however, so we cannot substantiate those claims either. The syndicated household advice columns uh, by Ann Adams and Nan Nash Cummings in their in their column entitled Ann and Nan in October of 1997 reported that the name came from the similar Watergate cake, which shares most of the same ingredients. And the recipes came out during the Watergate scandal and the cake has a cover up icing and it's full of nuts. And the salad is also full of nuts. And both the cake and the salad were part of a trend for satirically named recipes, such as Nixon's perfectly clear consomme and Liddy's clam up chowder. So if you know your history, you're gonna laugh at that um, and since I remember that very vividly from my childhood I'm laughing now I was only like seven or eight years old when that thing those things took place but regardless another interesting note is that in 1922 Helen Keller published a similar recipe calling for canned diced pineapple nuts marshmallows whipped cream and other ingredients she claims I ate it at first in California so I called it Golden Gate salad similar to fruit salad and pineapple salad recipes had been published in the 1910s and Golden Golden Gate salad was served in some American hotels up to that point as well. So there's all the information that you'll ever need for Watergate salad. But the most important thing is how does it taste? So I'm gonna have Rick, I'm gonna give Rick a, a taste. And I get a lot of people who ask me how come you're always feeding your husband? Well, my husband is holding the camera with my good hand. With his good hand. And most of you may or may not know, but Rick has multiple sclerosis and his left hand is not as good as his right hand, so that is why I I help him eat. <laughs> but only when we're doing this. Otherwise he feeds himself. Mm, That's really that yummy. Is scandalous. That is really good. Yes, it is. And rich. It's rich. And another great point is you didn't heat up your kitchen making it. You didn't have to turn on the stove. You didn't have to turn on the oven. This gets thrown together in a matter of minutes and gets stuck in the fridge. It's nice and cool and refreshing. And who doesn't like that on a hot summer evening? That's how you make Watergate salad. Are you ready for a retro recipe? Cause I am. Today we're gonna do a retro recipe of an old classic, a family favorite. I'm sure it is in your house too, but this is a Southern institution, honey. This here is ambrosia salad. Yes, it's a salad, but it's a dessert because in the South, this is a salad. Because in the South, cornbread is a vegetable when you go to a restaurant. So it's mac and cheese. And mac and cheese is a, is a vegetable too, right? Only here. Dirty rice, honey, it's a vegetable. So today we're making ambrosia salad. And I have a couple of these retro recipes that I'm gonna be bringing to you in, the, in upcoming episodes, but today we're starting with a serious classic. I grew up eating this and I bet you did too. And I'm wondering how long it's been since you actually ate some. And I think this is the perfect thing to take to put on that potluck table when your friends invite you to their barbecue 
or when you have one of your own. A 20 ounce can of pineapple tidbits. I like the tidbits better than the chunks because they go further and you get a little bit more in, in every bite. So this is one 20 ounce can. This is two 15 ounce cans of mandarin oranges. Both of these I have drained. I drain them very, very well. This here is a small jar of maraschino cherries that I drained but did not rinse, but once I took them out of the strainer, I put them on a plate with a paper towel to absorb some of the extra juice because we don't want that to be too pink. We're gonna use a cup of sweetened flaked coconut and our dressing is gonna be a cup of sour cream and a, this is a 10 ounce or you can get an eight ounce container of the name brand, the Cool Whip. This is True Whip, so this is just a uh, whipped dessert topping. You buy this in your grocer's freezer and then you make sure that you put it in the fridge overnight to thaw out. I like this one because it's, it's just a little bit better choice and it's not really much more expensive. So check your, um, your grocer's freezer for that. Walmart doesn't carry this, but I do know that you can get it at Harris Teeter Publix and Food Lion if you're in areas that have those grocery stores. We're also gonna be using a 10 ounce bag of fruit flavored marshmallows. You can choose to use regular mini marshmallows if you like, but we're gonna go ahead and use the fruit flavored ones because typically I have always, you know, my grandmother always made the ambrosia with the, with the colored ones. So we're gonna start by getting our dressing or our sauce or the creamy part of our ambrosia salad. We're going to add our sour cream. Then we're gonna take our whipped topping and add that in there. So y'all tell me you know ambrosia salad because I'm gonna be sad if you don't. And if you don't know ambrosia salad, you definitely need to introduce yourself. <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and mix up the sour cream and the whipped topping best you can. And now all you have to do is add all the rest of this goodness in here And always save a little coconut for the top um, off to the side. You're not gonna use a whole bag of it anyway, so give this a really good stir and get all of those ingredients incorporated and well mixed because everybody wants a cherry and everybody wants to get some pineapple and some orange. And I, you know what? I am not a huge fan of this frozen whip topping, but this true whip tastes really delicious. And I remember the bean green grapes. Yes, some people add um, green grapes to theirs. Absolutely. Um, you can add whatever kind of fresh fruit you want. Some people use canned uh, fruit cocktail yeah. for ambrosia salad. So, you know, it's really up to you. This is just my version. And some people like to add chopped nuts to it. I am not a fan of chopped nuts in here, but, you know, if you like that, you go for it. You can add the nuts right in or you can add and sprinkle them across the top. That's entirely up to you. So. That right there is ambrosia salad, but it's not complete until you get the marshmallows going in there. Mix this up again quite well. This is best if it sits in the refrigerator for at least an hour before enjoying. The marshmallows are going to kind of get rid of that powdery uh, texture that they have and they're going to kind of melt into the salad and they're going to sweeten it and they're going to just taste amazing. This is a lovely summer dessert. I don't know why we stopped eating things like this. These are great to have on hand in your fridge. You know, in the summer, everything is just so hot and miserable. In the evening, after you've showered and you've cooled off and your house is cooling off and it's dark outside, it's just nice way after dinner if you want a little something sweet, scoop into this and it's just perfect. And it's nice and cold. I think about when I was a kid, <clears throat> my mom, all summer long, she made jello desserts every day almost. Um, just sometimes just jello with fruit cocktail or jello with bananas, or she would make those layered jello desserts, or she would take jello and cool it for a little while and then bring it out and beat it with the, the beaters on the mixer, and it would make a foamy jello um, that would separate, and there would be this delicious foam on the top, and then there would be the solid jello on the bottom. From the simple stuff. It is super simple, and it's really tasty. I don't know when we got away from all of that, so. 
I think it's maybe time to revisit those things. What do you guys think? Because I'm thinking about doing a Jello playlist. And of course, this is a retro recipe, and it's going to go on the retro recipes playlist. But I think Jello is completely underrated and underappreciated, and I think it's time to get back to it. There you have it. A delicious, cool and refreshing ambrosia salad. Now make sure you keep this in your fridge for at least an hour, two is better, overnight is best, but no matter how long you let it sit, it's still gonna be delicious, cool and refreshing. Um, it's gonna be sweet, but not too sweet. It's full of fruit flavors and deliciousness. Yes, we used canned fruit, but so what? You know what, when I was a kid, this was a real treat and it was looked forward to, especially in the hot summer months when my mom would make it as a dessert. Just give it a try. If you've never, if you've never met Ambrosia Salad, I, I'm happy to be the one to introduce you to it, so.